What's happening, YouTube? Eric with our real estate journey. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video is going to be focused on installing our exhaust fan. We went with the Utilitech, as you can see, obviously, right here. And this thing it measures, what is it, 8 inches or something? Uh, 7 and a half inches or so. Square uh, LED. They had one and uh, installed at Home Depot with their other lights so you can compare brightness and all that. This one looks to be pretty bright. It's a bathroom. We're going to have uh it, we're going to have sconces installed. This is the old old style light that you probably saw in an earlier video. But we're going to end up having sconces as well. We're also over here where the shower is at, we're going to have LEDs. So it's not like this thing had to be had to be super bright or anything. But we're just, we're really not huge fans of like that real warm yellowish light, I guess, for lack of better terms. If you're curious, uh, yeah, I already, uh, already opened the sucker up, as you can see. Um, wanted to kind of get a feel for what I was going to be installing. I know these are pretty simple before I step on it and break it and ruin my day. Um, these things are usually pretty simple. So I, I wasn't, I'm not really concerned about it. But anyway, uh, this is what this one looks like here. I thought it was pretty cool that they, they actually give you the definition to explain what it is you're looking at and where this one falls, which is 1.5 considered quiet, right about in that area there, I would say. And what was it? A hundred uh, for the airflow. So, pretty high. So, uh, anyway, this video is going to chop up a little bit because I don't have a tripod or anything to mount my phone on to record this stuff yet. I thought the one that uh, Kathy had would would hold this, but it didn't. So, hopefully here soon we'll, we'll, we'll get that straightened out. Alright, so, when installing an exhaust fan... A light for your bathroom the first thing you would do is if you already have one installed if this is just a replacement obviously it's just going to go right where the old one was if it's a different size obviously cut the drywall out and make the adjustments a lot of these a lot of the standard ones are the same size housing so this particular uh, box here from what I've dealt with, because I usually, anytime I've done stuff for uh, rental properties or when I used to do a little more remodeling uh, a few years ago, um, if you go with kind of the standard off the shelf units, they kind of, they're all kind of interchangeable. Slight differences here and there. Uh, this part right here, this fan can be removed. So you may get lucky, you might want to take your old one apart first. Take a look at it and try to find one that uh, would fit in there so you don't have to disconnect your duct work or any of that. So, but regardless, in my situation, it was a it was an old one, 25 years old for when this place was built. It was right there in that location. It is, it, it was actually centered because that is, if you were installing new, if, say this was a complete uh, remodel like this, for instance, and you were going to be reconfiguring stuff, or if it's new construction, you want to measure it out your bathroom. Obviously, from you know side to side, front to back, all that stuff. Find your middle spot if that makes the most sense, and that's where you would put it. This one, I'm it, the existing one was already centered off. I remeasured just to be sure, and uh, and it was so. That's where I'm going to put this one. All right, so got this mounted. You want to make sure that you're flush with the this the wood here because the light once you put drywall on here, then the light is going to go up and set flush. Get this aimed properly here. But the drywall once it's mounted, which half inch, then the light itself will connect and be flush with the drywall itself. So also 
this right here, most of these all come off um, or slide either or if you have if you don't want to take it all the way off that way you can actually get your your uh, screw gun in there to get that on there and then you just bring that back down do it like that all right we get this duct connected up here this tie wrap was actually on the, the from the existing installation and they did a good job of not over tightening it um, it's snug on here it's, it's snug but wasn't so tight that I would have to cut that and redo it uh, the instructions say you can use multiple multiple things duct tape or whatever um, tie wraps uh, I just so happen to luck out and this tie wrap was on there and it worked so we got that on there just make sure it's secure enough uh, this isn't a, a jet fan or anything so it's not going to get blowing off um, real easily but again you don't want to just just laying on, on there it will potentially pop off so okay so this step you remove the access panel here pull out all these wires and you'll see a lot of different wires you have the black white blue green and another white coming out that's because the light and the fan are two separate circuits that can either be joined together so that you flip the switch they both come on at the same time or you can separate them we have chosen to separate them and the way to do that um, so let me say this I am NOT an electrician everything I learn is from on the job from other electricians from YouTube all that stuff I'm not certified so please talk to an electrician yourself or have one install this for you if you're unsure I'm just showing you how I do it so anyway what we do uh, we separate them so the light and the fan will be on a, a uh, two toggle switch basically and uh, apologize <laughs> if you haven't learned in uh, some of my videos already you will definitely pick up soon that I uh, don't know all the technical terms for stuff I just know how to do some things and I do it and use whatever term pops out of my mouth uh, at that time so anyway for the uh, situation here, for us, what we want, we take the black to black, simple. They use blue, which also, black is typically in these exhaust fans, black is used for the fan, and blue is used for the light. So, I ran three wire, this is 12-3 wire, which means it comes with black, red, white, and ground, and so we take black to black, the red to blue, whites, which are all neutral, will get tied together, and then ground to ground. And uh, this unit was pretty cool. It had its own uh, quick connect connectors already uh, connected up. So all you have to do is push in the others. What I did here is I use uh, Wagos which are these really cool electrical quick connect devices. Um, just as opposed to using wire nuts and trying to cram a bunch of wire nuts into boxes, these Wagos are super, super cool. I just came across them um, just recently and uh, started using them. I heard about them a, a while back, but it was in one ear, out the other. Never use them, old school, just gonna do an outlet, just reuse the wire nuts that are in there. Um, so be it but anyway this device has these quick connects already installed so all you do is strip your wire back about a half inch or so and push it in and you'll feel it kind of click in there and uh, kind of gave it the pull test it didn't come out so I think we're good there and uh, the wire the 12 3 I ran I ran it long because again I am NOT an electrician 
and I wasn't a hundred percent sure how this was going to work out if we were going to stick with this particular location. So I just ran it a little loose. Uh, it's not tied in anywhere, obviously. So I'll now back pull it to uh, get it secure, tied in, dressed in nicely up out of the way of the drywall and uh, pull it all the way back out. And it looks like I'm going to have several feet of uh, extra wire, which is a good thing. So anyway, what I had to do here was uh, I just took a scrap piece of, of neutral wire, cut it into two pieces, and then jumped them together so that I could tie into the neutral coming out of my 12.3. Now here in the box, got it wired up. The uh, breaker turned back on using uh, one of these Leviton uh, dual switches here. Uh, these are pretty cool. I, I actually covered it up with tape here. Um, I like to do this just just because um, if it's just a single box, an outlet box or switch box or something, I don't necessarily do that very often because if you're working on opening that box, you're working with that particular switch uh, or outlet and you're usually pretty careful about that. However, if you have more than one in a box when this is this is going to be three, the if you're trying to switch out any anything in here, it's it's a good idea just to cover it up, protect protect yourself and or whoever else from other wires bumping into into it, your fingers, any of that kind of stuff. But anyway, on these switches here, there's a metal tab. Uh, you have two black pegs here that have for power. There's a met, there's a like a a a uh, little tab that connects the two, so that if you want single power running into these switches, you leave that tab there. If you wanted separate power controlling these each switch separately, then you would break that tab off. So pretty neat little thing. Uh, again, you can look on Home Depot YouTube, probably uh, Lowe's. I'm not sure if Lowe's covers. Carries Leviton. I can't recall for some reason. Any, anyway, or vice versa. It could be, it could be Lowe's carries it and Home Depot doesn't. So anyway, what we did is, and again, you can see these Wagos connections that are uh, really useful. So what I did here, let me move this stuff out of the way. Okay. Remember, it's always a good idea to mark which is your feed or your power coming from the, your breaker box main uh, uh, power coming in so this comes in which is this wire right here I had to rearrange some of these wires like the main power originally was I think it was like over here uh, there's an outlet in the bedroom that is tied into all this separately it was kind of intertwined they really had some, the wire nuts and everything it was kind of a it was a mess in there so not that it looks any it doesn't look very pretty right now, but I did clean it up pretty well. Moved some wires in different areas just to make more sense. Like here's our 12-3 that we ran to this light. Um, brought up through here. So anyway, the blue coming out of the device is for the light. Black is for the fan. Uh, you could have wire this either way and it's just it's totally up to you you want the light on top or the fan on top i went with i just followed straight out of the instructions and uh it shows that this the fan was on top so just so again i'm not an electrician uh so i like to try to stay uh, exact to any instructions that I'm looking at for any devices just so I don't get mixed up or confused burn the house down or kill myself so I have the red coming from the device into here and this controls my light that is bright and then the fan here and this thing takes a second I hope you can hear this Here, cranking up. 
There she is. So, it works. All I have to do now is clean this stuff up a little bit, secure it, and uh, move along. All right, so pretty much finished up with this now. Turn the light out just so uh, I wouldn't blind you guys like I did a few minutes ago. Um, so this, as you can see, uh, goes up flush right now to the wood, but, um, I'm, well, okay. These things, as you saw right there, aren't quite as secure as you'd hope they'd be. Um, so there are little slots in here. So you bend these together, slide up in there. And it's supposed to catch and hold like so. This is the uh, adapter that connects to the light itself, straight to the, uh, the unit. Here's where the wiring goes in. And uh, with this being installed flush, when I push this up, the interesting thing is it locks flush to that. I think I'm gonna have to adjust this and bring it down a half inch for the drywall. Even though the instructions say to put it flush with this and uh, a few others that I've done recently in rental properties went flush to the to the um, to the beams here as well I don't think it's gonna work because I'm gonna go ahead and close this show you and uh, I'm not gonna mess with that for now but it's not super super tight in there I don't really like the fit but if you see it, it's Locked all the way up in there, and it is flush now, but that's not accounting for, for a half-inch drywall. So that means that it won't lock all the way in there. So I can see myself having to bring this down a half-inch. No big deal. Plenty of room. Just adds a couple of minutes. So, uh, but I'm not ready, quite ready for that yet. I have some other wiring to do. Some some uh, framing to do before then but uh, anyway today's video was just to focus on that give you kind of, kind of an idea um, there's the wiring sorry for bouncing back and forth and not being a very uh, not keeping on subject keep bouncing around but anyway there was the wire pull the slack and I did have as you can see I had about about a six foot uh, scrap piece left over, which is awesome. Of course, you don't throw that away. You use uh, a lot of times in these outlets, you have to use jumpers, and especially using these um, these Wagos, you'll you can run multiple things into one, and then run one jumper out, just like I did with this uh, grounding wire here. Ground from here, and tie them all in together here, so. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Subscribe if you'd like, and we'll see you next time.